Fantasy TV. What sort of sick need to indict and condemn? What sort of hole in one's own soul does it require to pervert the book of Romans until one takes the section of the book dedicated to the most lurid description and most sweeping condemnation of the whole human race apart from Christ, which is Romans beginning with 118, and to insist that these are threats leveled against justified saints. What kind of man uses pre-Calvary condemnation? Romans 118 to 320. Pre-Calvary condemnation as a cudgel and a cattle prod to frighten post-justification believers, members of the body of Christ, with the lake of fire. This is Martin Zender. Welcome to MCTV. Uh, Caitlin, please come back to the side of the light. Come back to the side of justification. Come back to the side of people in Christ who realize that they've been declared righteous and that nothing they can do can improve their standing in the sight of God and Christ. And yet, when you look at our lives, are we sinning freaks? Are we out committing heinous crimes against God or man? No. We are, for the most part, living mild and quiet lives. And... You can hear the testimony of anyone on this channel who, after they have found the truth of justification, found the truth of grace, that had the power, for it is the evangel of the grace of God which has the power to keep us from sin because we're not obsessing with sin. I still appreciate your comments, Caitlin, but your father is off on a high horse of Old Testament condemnation and threats. Again, using pre-Calvary condemnation, that's what Romans 1, 18 through 320 is. Pre-Calvary, Paul is taking the position, like, let's pretend that the cross never happened. Of course, the people he's writing to, the Romans, they already know the truth. They already have the evangel, but Paul is laying it out for the ages. He's laying out the blueprint. They already know that. And Paul is dedicating this section of Romans from chapter 1, verse 18 to 320, He's dedicating it to the most, as I said, the most lurid description and the most sweeping condemnation of the whole human race apart from Christ. This is hypothetically the human race without Christ. And yet your father is insisting that these are threats leveled against justified saints. We're not having it. You think we're going back to law, to condemnation, to guilt? We're not. Caitlin, your father, and I'm saying this to you because of the comments that you made. I love you, Caitlin, and I love your father. You know that. But something happened from the time of the interview at this very home, at this very spot, something happened. It's like Johnny doesn't know that the cross ever occurred. And I have a quote from his video that is going to show that. It is the most, it's the oddest, strangest, most disturbing thing that I've heard anyone say. Who I thought was a believer. But 
taking these verses that are not speaking about the saints at all. And yet your father is not recognizing the giant gulf between verse 17 and verse 18 of Romans 1. 17 belonging to the greeting. 18 belonging to Paul is laying out why Christ died. Why there was a need for the Son of God to come and take the sins of the world on his shoulders because of the dark situation of the human race, which Paul, again, describes in the most lurid detail from Romans 1, 18 to 3, 20. And again, I keep saying it again and again. Maybe I'll say it a different way that it'll get through, that the light will beam through of the crime of taking justified saints who have arrived at Romans 3.21 where your dad never gets to, never gets to justification. Do you know what justification is? I think you do. You used to being declared righteous by God. Righteous. To take post-justification believers, members of the body of Christ, and to say that Romans 1, 18 through 320 is written about them. And Paul is threatening them. That is threatening us as well. With the lake of fire. It is a high crime and misdemeanor. It is self-righteousness on steroids. It is nothing less than still making sin something that can separate us from the love of God. Because in the video, I'm going to continue to play. Your father says that God has to look the other way. If we continue, if we do these things, God has to look the other way. Can't look at sin, hate sin, hate sin. Newsflash, God did something about sin. He sent his own son. That's the missing piece. All right, I'm not going to address, I, I'm finished addressing you for now. Uh, I appreciate your comments, always. I come here to herald the gospel of the grace of God and to keep this crap out of Paul's gospel. And so when someone comes up and makes a video where there's even 10 views, let alone 326 views, and people are listening to it and like, hmm, hmm, maybe that's me in Romans 1.18. It's not. And anybody who tries to put you there I got to put them somewhere, you see. They're disqualified to be teachers. And when I read to you the quotes, Johnny is quoting, ladies and gentlemen, now greetings. Johnny is quoting from a, verse, from a version of Scripture I have never heard of. He doesn't say where it's from, but it is so cartoonish. It's like he's writing it himself. It's like he's writing, he, 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 he's reading. I'm going to play it for you. I'm not going to get all through it today. I'll be lucky to get through this introduction. I'm going to play it for you. I want to be done with this tomorrow by the end of the week. You know how I'm going to end the week? I'm going to end the week on a high note. I'm going to play you things today that you are not going to believe. Where these scripture verses are coming from, it's just words thrown in willy-nilly, helter-skelter, made up as Johnny's going along. He makes it up, and yet he's reading it. So where, where, where is this cartoon version you're reading from, Johnny? There's no version. I used to own 27 versions of the New Testament, of the, of the Scriptures. In fact, and I've never heard these words that you're putting into these verses. It's criminal. You know, we're going to end on a high note. Tomorrow, if I pray that I finish this little mini thing tomorrow. I hope I do. I don't know if I'll do or if I will or not, but I'll try. Johnny is threatening anyone who listens to me or anyone who listens to, God forbid, rest in grace, Jessica, or anybody who listens to Jax 
or Scott Hicko or Rob or any of these fine teachers were all apostates. We're all apostates. We're deceivers. And we'll probably end up in the lake of fire. So tomorrow, I'm going to take you into the weekend with a really hilarious joke. It's actually hilarious. That justified people, people to whom God cannot bring an indictment because he's justified them in the blood of Christ, that these people could possibly be subject to judgment, let alone the lake of fire. <laughs> and again, it's the earnestness of, of Johnny Green that really makes this humorous. I mean, it, it, at that point, you have to laugh. But at these scripture verses, it's incredible. But that's not the worst of it. Okay, instead of just talking to you about it, I'm going to play it. Now, I, I want to remind you. Again, let's just review briefly Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 18 and going through Romans 3.20. I learned this from looking at a literary framework of the book of Romans, from studying many commentaries on the book of Romans, especially from the concordant publishing concern. And I wrote a book on Romans. Where is that book? I wrote a book on Anyway, I don't have it here with me. Oh, this is it. I wrote a 622-page book book on the first four chapters of Romans. I know what I'm talking about. Not because I'm a genius, but number one, I have a sound translation, the Concordance Literal New Testament. I don't pick some Mickey Mouse translation or Goofy or Dumbo or Donald Duck and his nephew's translation to teach truth from one of the most profound writings ever given to human beings, the book of Romans. This is serious. We're not playing games here. If you're going to tell us that we, believers, are subject to the lake of fire, you better be coming with some heavy-hitting verses, and you better not be bringing a Donald Duck translation, but that's exactly what you're doing. And I'm telling you, when, when you hear this, you're not going to, Believe it. And I, the reason I want to be done tomorrow is because it's almost not worth any more breath. It's so bizarre. It's so out there. But again, we're learning more in depth. We're examining not ourselves. Johnny wants us in this upcoming audio that you're going to hear. He wants us to examine ourselves. Paul says, I don't let anyone examine me. Paul says, I don't examine myself. I'm not... I would never allow myself to be examined by man's day. I'm sure as hell not going to be examined by Johnny Green. Who thinks he's an Old Testament prophet. The one who examines me is the Lord. I stand before him and he's my justifier. The only one who can indict me is my justifier. Johnny Green can't indict me. No matter how serious or somber he is, can't indict me. Sorry. Not going to work. Not going to work. In fact, at some point, it's like I say, it's hilarious. So let me just say again, I love Johnny and Caitlin. I love them. But I absolutely hate this teaching. And I don't know what happened. I, I, again, I am surmising that it's a virus that was caught on the... Because Johnny mentions later in this video that it's all over the internet it's all over no social media okay he's plugged into social media and he says the call for repentance has gone out on social media oh social media why didn't you say so social media say no more say no more social media well if everybody's calling for repentance repent from your sins or die go to the lake of fire if, if every well then Okay, so you didn't tell me your social media. Well, all right, that puts things in a whole new light. I'm going to start fearing for my salvation now. One of the funniest guys in the world is Tony Nungesser, and I remember him telling me once that he wanted a house by the lake in the fourth eon, I think is what he said. And I said, oh, yeah, he goes, yeah, I want a house next to the lake of fire. <laughs> I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm just going to fish. I'm going to see if I can fish for souls in the lake of fire. Total 
stand-up comic routine. Tony Nungus, they're one of the funniest guys because he's so deadpan. Funny, one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. Right along with uh, Wes Follenkamp, that's that dry humor. All right, let me remind you, again, Romans 1, 18 through 320, the state of the human race, including Jews, apart from Christ. Paul is, Paul is saying that this, this, we have nothing to look forward to but indignation if Christ hadn't come. That's the key. See, if Christ hadn't come, all this would be true. But, 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 but Christ, Christ did come. Newsflash, Johnny Green, Christ did come. Caitlin, Christ came. And that's why we don't have to worry about any of this. This is not about us. Paul is writing to the Romans about the state of the world. And he gets to the evangel. Paul does. Johnny doesn't. In Romans 3.21, Yet now, apart from law, righteousness of God is manifest. Yet a righteousness of God, of Jesus Christ's faith. Not ours, Jesus Christ's faith. Not our works, not our faith. Not our determination to avoid sin. But what do you know? We're still avoiding sin. Not because we're under law, not because we're scared of the lake of fire, because Johnny Green frightened the hell out of us. No, because we love God, we love Christ, and the Spirit is in us. The Spirit of God operates in us, and because of that, as Johnny rightly says, the Spirit has fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, and all the rest. And so, because of that, by us not concentrating, by us not fretting about it, by us Tending to things above, not that on the earth. Johnny's pulling us back to the earth. Examine yourself. Examine your sin. Examine your flesh. Examine it, examine it, examine it like you're picking ticks off your skin. Just look at yourself constantly. That's what he says. Repent, repent. Examine, repent. Examine, repent. Examine, repent. No, I got a better idea. How about I set my affection on things above where Christ is? Oh, Christ, wait a minute. Isn't that the one who came? To take away the sins of the world so that I don't have to worry about sin? <gasps> Martin Zender says we don't have to worry about sin. This guy can't be right. He must be a false prophet. Uh, well, I'm on pretty solid scriptural ground there. Number one, I'm justified. And number two, in Philippians 4, 6, Paul says, do not be worrying about anything. But of course, Johnny's Donald Duck version and Huey, Dewey, and Louie version probably says, don't worry about anything except sin. I would not doubt it. When you hear what his version does say, whatever the hell he's reading from, you would not doubt that the Huey, Dewey, Louie version Johnny's reading from would say in Philippians 4, 6, do not worry about anything except sin. You still have to worry about sin. All right. Uh, after the, those introductory remarks, <laughs> we are now three quarters of the way through the video. Let me remind you that Johnny thinks Romans 1, 18 through 320 is about the body of Christ. I need to remind you of that because when I go on, it's going to be helpful. And took notes and I'm just going to read through Romans 1. It won't take that long. Listen to the words. This is about the apostasy. Paul is speaking to the believers. Every epistle Paul wrote wasn't to the average audience. Of just See, when he says Paul speaking to the believers, he also means, you, you, you can tell later, that he's talking about the believers. Believers and non-believers alike. Paul's epistles were written specifically to believers, to the ecclesia. So everything that you take, every warning, warning, every encouragement, Dr. Smith, the warning. good, the bad, the ugly that Paul writes in his epistles yes. is to believers. No. Not the general public. So it's, keep that in it's mind. to as them, I... but, not ab but not about them. But Johnny equates to with about. He conflates to with about. Read this. This is to you if you are a professing believer. This is to you if you are a professing believer. This is to you. These are, these are the fears you need to have. Forget that you've arrived at Romans 3.21, the justification. Forget that. Okay, now, that was the two-minute, now that was the around approximately the three-minute mark of Johnny's video titled, you can look this up, the apostate commit the sin unto death by continually thrusting away their conscience. Snappy. Okay, sorry. I'm going to go now to the nine-minute, 20-second mark. 
now that you know that he believes that this section of Romans is written to the believer. In other words, these are threats to the believer. It's not instruction to the believer concerning the plight of humanity apart from Christ. No, that's what it actually is, but Johnny doesn't see it that way. Again, I just want to cement that home to you. As we listen to this. Verse 18 in Romans 1. On the other hand, Paul declares, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Who suppress? God is condemning all wicked people, and we find out in Romans 3, uh, 10 and 11, that everybody's that way. Oh, okay, I'm going to show you this. Okay, I'm going to, there's something I want to do, but let, let me just play this, oh. this again. Sinful, wicked people. Sinful, wicked people. Who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That's verse 18. Who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Here is Romans 1, 18 from the Concordant Version. For God's indignation is being revealed from heaven on all the irreverence and injustice of men who are retaining the truth in injustice. Where does it say suppressing the truth retaining the truth suppressing the truth you might think that's a small thing but it's not but compared to what's coming that was nothing let me say this before i go on if johnny thinks that this whole section is about the body of christ and it's warning the body of christ and we need to take heed that we don't do any of these things lest we end up in the lake of fire then why not go all the way Go all the way, and let's go to Romans 3, 10. Not one is just, not even one. Because that's part of this section. No one is understanding. No one is seeking God. So Johnny's basically looking at you and looking at me and saying, you're not just. Like this is some kind of news. You're not just. You're not understanding. You're not seeking out God. You avoid him. And yet we know that we're justified. We're not just in our own power. But if, if we're going to, if somebody like Johnny is going to take this section of Romans and apply it to justified saints, then you got to go all the way. There's no one righteous, no one just. You're not just. Look at yourself. You're not just. You're not just. You're not just. You're not just. Go here. Why don't you go here? No one just. And the implication is, if you don't become just and quick, then God must turn his face from you and you have nothing to look forward to but indignation and the lake of fire. There's no one just. To which we would say, duh. But God has done something about it, which you never found out, Johnny. I thought you knew this. You never found out that God did something about this injustice of the whole human race. He killed the old humanity. One died for the sake of all. The all who are unjust, the all of Romans 3, 10. No one is just, not even one. Christ died for those people, for the no one who are, no one who is just. He, he died for those people. And the result is, you're not going to believe this. And I know you're not going to believe this, but I believe it. And everyone listening to my voice believes it. If Caitlin is listening to my voice, she used to believe it. Christ died for the sake of all, and consequently all died. And Romans 6, verse 7 says that he who has died has been justified from sin. And Romans 5, 18 says, as through one man, condemnation, that is injustice, came upon all through one man. Salvation comes to all. And I know Johnny... 
and Caitlin both believe that Christ is the Savior of all humanity. But we who grab onto this truth early because God has given us faith, we are delivered from any judgment. We're delivered from self-analysis, from internal inspection, from worry, from fret. We're delivered from it. And so, this is why when Paul says in Romans 3.21, yet now, apart from law, righteousness of God is manifest, yet a righteousness, of, a righteousness of God through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. This wonderful blessing is on those who are believing. We're believing. So get away. Get away from us with your condemnation. Romans 1.19 says, Paul says, in Romans 1.19, that these greedy believers what? know the truth because God has made it known to them. These greedy believers know the truth because God has made it known to them. These greedy believers? And his eyes are down. He's looking at a page. He's reading, and he prefaces it. I'm going to play this again. He prefaces it with Paul says in Romans 1.19. Listen. Truth because God has... Romans 1.19 says, Paul. Romans 1.19 says, okay, not Johnny Green. Romans 1, not Huey, Dewey, and Louie, although they're the ones that wrote this version. Says in Romans 1.19 that these greedy believers what? know the truth because God has made it known to them. These greedy believers. This confirms for you that he believes this applies to believe These greedy believers. Let me read for you verse 19. Romans chapter 1. See if you can find greedy believers, these greedy believers. Romans 1, 19. Because that which is known of God is apparent among them, for God manifests it to them. Among who? God's indignation is being revealed from heaven on all the irreverence and injustice of humans who are retaining the truth in injustice. That was verse 18. Here's verse 19. Because that which is known of God is apparent among them, for God manifests it to them. These greedy believers... Where are you getting believers and where are you getting greedy? This so-called version was done up by someone who has a bent for condemnation, for threats, for being on a mosaic high horse that Moses wouldn't even be on this horse. This is insidious. Apparently, there's a bunch of people on social media Maybe they're all reading from this version, a so-called version of Scripture that says greedy believers. Because that which is known of God is apparent among them, for God manifested to them. How do you turn that into these greedy believers? You can't even get that in the King James Version. Romans 1, 19 KJV. Because that which may be known by God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them. Greedy believers, please. And we're supposed to take you seriously. And you start this video saying that there are some people who love perverting the book of Romans. I'm paraphrasing you there, but I played it yesterday. Who's perverting the book of Romans? Who's putting greedy believers in verse 19? As if we're not going to check on this. As if, hmm, that, that sounds strange. I've been reading Romans chapter 1 for 40 freaking years. I have greedy believers. I missed that. Greedy believers? And you have, a, you have a serious face when you're reading this. Who do you think we are? We're not that stupid. We're not stupid at all. We're onto this. Because it's cartoonish. It's Disney-like. Greedy believers. Yet they withhold it. They withhold it. Because God has made it known to them. <laughs> Yet they withhold it. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to go back. I'm gonna, Sinful, I gotta, wicked people. Sinful, wicked people. That's not in the scripture either. Sinful, wicked people. That's not there either. Okay, but th th that's a small crime compared to that's this. That's the truth by their wickedness. Romans 1.19 says, Paul I got to do this again, sorry. In Romans 1.19, that these greedy believers uh -huh. know the truth because God has made it known to them. Yet they withhold it. If you could see his face when he says yet, you can hear the pause, yet they withhold it. They withhold it. They know it, but withhold it. I go back again to Romans 1, 19. Because that which is known of God is apparent among them, for God manifests it to them. 
Where is they withhold it? And you're saying that's in verse 19. It's not in verse 19. It's not in verse 20. It's not anywhere. And we're supposed to trust you. You're presenting yourself at the beginning of this video as author as an authority on the book of Romans. Folks, wait till I get to verse 21. It gets worse. It really gets worse. But, I mean, for today, that's all I can give you today. It gets worse. Tomorrow, you're going you're gonna to hear something that makes me wonder. And I, I'm, I'm serious. It makes me wonder. Ah, oh, it's going to sound crazy. Grace and peace to all of you. Hold fast to the teaching with which you were taught, to the sacred scriptures correctly translated, to the truth of justification. Let no one be indicting you. Let no one allow no one to examine you, to dangle you over the lake of fire. We are God's beloved. We are his chosen, designated beforehand from before the disruption of the world. We cannot be indicted because the only one able to indict us is our justifier.